The chanted passion is a treasure of Holy Mother Church. And at St. Michael's Abbey, we are so blessed to be able to chant the sacred passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion has inspired generation upon generation of composers, for example, in Bach's St. Matthew's Passion or his St. John's Passion. And they got all their inspiration from the Catholics. And the way that the Catholic Passion is set up, the only Passion, we see that there are three main voices. The voice of Christ, which is the voice of a bass, and then you have the middle voice, which is the chronista, or the narrator of the Passion. And then you have everybody else, that is St. Peter, you have the Pharisees, everybody else in the Passion. And they are called the synagoga, and they are the higher voice. And so when you hear the voice of our Lord, you hear this deep rumbling bass, right? Quem queritis. And as soon as you hear that, then that's the signal everybody knew that was Christ speaking. And when he would say the words of consecration, you would hear everything that he said in this deep voice that is kind of like creating the world. And so the bass voice is the voice of God, right? Is the voice of masculinity and power, and it is the foundation of everything. Then you have the chronista, and how he sounds is, Passio Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, Secundum Johannem. And you have this beautiful floating melody. Da, 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 da and continuously throughout the entire Passion and is chanted. So you recognize the voice of the narrator as he goes through the story of the Passion in that tone. And then when you hear Pontius Pilate or St. Peter or any of the other characters in the Passion besides our Lord, you will hear a very high tenor voice. <laughs> Right. Very high voice, really signifying the other voices there. And so throughout the Passion, you have this beautiful trio of voices of our Lord and then the narrator and then the synagogue, everybody else, really just playing off of each other and telling the beautiful history of the Passion of our Lord. And as you hear this, you begin to almost go in a trance-like state because of the repetitive nature of the chant. And here, when something repeats, it's actually not boring, but it actually makes you love God. God more. And for example, we pray the rosary or we pray different prayers again and again. Each time we say those prayers, we should be going deeper and deeper into the mysteries of those prayers. And so to repeat something is actually a sign of great joy, not boredom or anything like that. And so when you hear the narrator sing the same pattern, <laughs> And you hear him sing that for 10, 12, 13, 14 minutes, right? A long, long time. But every time you hear that, you just get drawn more and more into the passion, loving the story of our passion and making the passion of our Lord part of our souls. Now, at the end of the Passion, this is where things become extremely beautiful and dramatic. And this is after our Lord has died. And so he's died on the cross, he has breathed his last, consumatum est, it's all finished. And then afterwards, there is this next section of the Passion, which is sung, which is called the Planctus Tone. It's sung in the Planctus Tone, which means the morning tone. And when you hear this, it again, just as so much of the dramatic chants of the chant uh, of the liturgy of the church, so much of those chants, they give us the chills. And every time you hear it, really after probably 12, 13, 14 minutes of just the beautiful repetitive nature of the narrator, just singing that, then suddenly the next melody that you hear is this huge mourning tone that just really goes from the highest point of the voice to the lowest point of the voice. And so here you're just hearing, for example, St. Mary Magdalene wailing because Christ has died. You know? And so after hearing, for example, da, 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 then Christ died, but in Latin, of course, right? Da, 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 da. 
And then suddenly, after this, there's a shoot up of the tone of the piece, and it goes super high. And then you have this very expressive scale that just runs down. It's like tears running down your face. So here it sounds. I hope I don't mess it up here. Rogavit Pilatum Yosef Abari Matea Eho quodes sit discipulus Jesu O cultus autem propter metum jude oro Ut tolerat corpus Jesu so here what it's saying is Joseph of Arimathea asks Pilate to take down the body of Jesus and to put it in the tomb. And so you hear this beautiful descending scale just constantly. They came and took the body of Jesus, and then now Nicodemus came, and then bearing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, they, of course, anointed the body of Jesus. And you hear this constantly, this wailing, and this beautiful, beautiful, heartfelt sorrow of all the saints as we mourn our sins for which Christ died for, and now he's being placed in the tomb. Everything is over. He has gone from the cross now to the um, hell in order to liberate all of the saints there from Noah and Adam all the way up until Saint Joseph. And then here we have all of these beautiful sentiments and all of these mysteries just conglomerated all together and all just so beautifully expressed in the chant in great reserved quality, but also in great drama as you hear in the end of the chant there. And so here we are giving everything to our Lord and I'll end that for you. Ergo propter para sheven, iude horum, qui a juxta erat monumentum, posso erunt Jesu. And you just hear the stone just kind of closing over the tomb, and now our Lord is at rest. <laughs>